Hey there, welcome back to Flat Tire Farm. Today we're gonna do a little investigating and have a little experiment. Now a while back I watched a video, a YouTube video from a very lovely and famous homesteader who said that she feeds this Redmond Livestock Salt um, to her family and that it just has little extra minerals in it and that she had contacted the company and based on what they had said she decided that she felt that this was safe for her family versus buying this Redmond Real Salt. Now this is definitely the made for people version, but if you look at the price comparison, this is $6.46 a pound um, to buy in Alaska where I live. Um, and this is the biggest container I can get or I can buy it on Amazon for $94 in a 25 pound bucket. And that is a whole lot of money. Or from Azure Standard, I can buy this 50 pound bag of fine livestock salt for $23 and some change. It works out to being 47 cents a pound versus $6.46 a pound. Now that sounds like a great deal, but is it really going to be okay to eat and am I willing to um, risk it? So I'm going to do some experiments, um, pretty simple ones. I'll show you the results and that'll give you maybe an idea of whether you're going to use it for your family and I'll let you know if I'm going to use it for my family. Okay, first I thought we'd do a visual comparison. This is the livestock salt. Mm -hmm. Looks like salt to me. Does have little black pieces and red pieces, but so does the regular Redmond salt, the Redmond real salt. So let's get a little teaspoon of that out. Oops. All right, so if you look at the grind on it. This Redmond Real Salt's definitely finer than this salt. However, both salts are still about the right size that I'd throw on my food and have no problem eating that. Let's pour some hot water in each one of these, dissolve them, and run through a coffee strainer and see what's left in the end. Okay. See if maybe we can see some sediment here at the bottom just by dissolving it. You can see those tiny little black pieces. Oh, I don't know if that grit is dirt or minerals, but let's see what's in the Redmond Real Salt, the made for people version. Get it to dissolve. Oh, there's not much left in that one. Oh, nope, there it is. So when I swirled around, all that little grit went to the center. So, definitely grit in this one too. All right, let's run through coffee filters and see, see how they compare. Okay, we're just gonna get these little strainers, put a coffee filter in it, give it a swoosh to get all the stuff mixed up. Okay, that's the livestock one. Stay in there, buddy. I'll get this little mesh strainer, stick it in there. Okay, here's the Redmond Real Salt. Ooh, there's still stuff in the bottom of that. And we'll give it another swoosh. There we go. Okay, that bowl's clean now. Whap. Okay, let's compare. This is the livestock salt. There's definitely stuff on the bottom of that. Okay, let's look a little closer, see what we got. Okay. When I move it around, it's just so fine. So fine. There's definitely a tiny bit of grit. Like, I'll show you. There's the biggest piece right here that I can see that I can feel. That's not any bigger than a piece of ground pepper. Okay, let's look at this one. So here's the Redmond Real Salt. Okay, let's look. There is the same red stuff. I assume that's just iron. And there still is this grit. That's shocking to me. I thought for sure the grit is still just as big. The couple pieces that are in there are just as big. Let me see if I can 
show you. So, there it is, right? There, by my thumbnail. That's quite surprising. Okay, on to the next test. Mr. Reeve, always my famous and bestest taste tester. Okay, this is the livestock salt. I did find a little bit of a big hunk of something, so I'll show you that. Hey, I was going to eat that. No, you were not going to eat it. This is the whole point of today. <laughs> okay, there's that chunk. That's definitely a bigger chunk than I'd want to eat, but we'll come back to that. This doesn't look much different than pink a Himalayan salt. There. It's got a little bit of color to it. All right. All right, Mr. Reeve. So which one's the livestock salt? This one. Okay. You're gonna dip your finger in there and see what it tastes like. Okay. What do you think? It's really not any different than the pink Himalayan salt to me. Okay. It doesn't, you know, like it's, it's obvious it's not an iodized salt. It doesn't have that bite. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like a softer salt, softer mm -hmm. taste. Mm -hmm. Okay. All mm. right. Yep. Use your, use your other hand and taste the next one. Cause we don't cross contaminate around here, right? Oh. There's really no difference. Tastes the same. It's definitely smaller granules, mm -hmm. but, uh, no difference. Okay, Mr. Reeve, do you think you'd eat, would you eat the livestock salt? Absolutely, yeah. You don't mind the chunks? No, no. I think it's, I think the chunks are, aren't any bigger than what we get from the grinder when we grind the pink Himalayan salt in the grinder, in the pepper mill. What if some of those chunks are not salt? What if they're minerals? We need minerals. What? <laughs> <laughs> now the controversy is about the size of the grit. Um, and rightly so. Um, looking at what Redmond has to say about um, that livestock salt is that the grit is too big um, for people to be eating and it's not good for your teeth. It's going to wear down your teeth. Now, I like to keep my teeth. It's a real important part of my life. So I think I found a way to mitigate that. Now they're the same amount of minerals in each one. They taste the same, according to Mr. Reeve. And he likes my cooking, so that means that he is a professional taste tester, and oh. we can trust him. <laughs> <laughs> but I think if we just take that animal salt and run it through um, a mesh, like I use these little plastic mesh um, strainers all the time, it would catch anything too oh, big that yeah. I felt like I couldn't be comfortable eating. So let's see if that works. Okay, I thought we should do a bigger comparison than just a teaspoon. So, this is a half a cup of that livestock salt. Let's shake it out and see what's in it. This is what, this I would definitely use for my table salt. It looks exactly like the real salt now. Exactly like it, okay? And what's left in here Let's do a little bit more experiment. Let's run some hot water through it and see what's actually left that's not salt because anything that's salt's gonna dissolve. We have our grit and big stuff all in this little mesh strainer. We'll fill that up. Let it sit for a little bit so it can dissolve. Dude, there's more coffee grounds at the bottom of my cup of coffee. Okay, we got everything dissolved in here. Let's see. That's it. That's everything that's not salt, that's too big to go through my little fine mesh strainer. This is an eighth, an eighth of a teaspoon <laughs> measure. Oh goodness. Okay, that's what we got. An eighth of a teaspoon. The question I find myself left with is, are the differences between the livestock salt and the Redmond real salt enough for me to justify paying a dollar for 2.6 ounces of Redmond real salt or a dollar for two pounds of the livestock salt? For me, the answer is easy. I'm gonna go with the livestock salt. I'm gonna use my, sh my super cheap mesh strainer, shake it out, the stuff that falls through that's super fine, it's gonna go in my salt shaker for the table. All the stuff that's left in the mesh strainer, a lot of it's big chunks of salt and a little bit of grit. Remember, we got an eighth of a teaspoon of grit out of half a cup of salt. 
So that stuff that was left in the top of the mesh strainer, I'm going to use that for things like pickled eggs and brine for smoked salmon. Now that grit might still be in there, but I don't know about you. I don't know anybody that's licking the bottom of the pickled egg jar. Uh, that stuff isn't even going to affect me. So hope you found my video useful today. Leave in the comments below what you think you might do for your family. Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? Put it down there. I'm going to leave a link in the description below for Azure Standard if that's something you might be interested in looking into. And I'll also leave a link in the description below for my little mesh strainers that I get on Amazon. I think I buy three of them, three different sizes, and they're like $12 or $13. As always, thanks for joining us on Flat Tire Farm. I hope you enjoyed my video today. Stay tuned for more videos on how we make a normal life happen on this small off-grid Alaska homestead. Now you guys stay warm out there.